On August 6, 2025, after months of tracking, shipping updates, and a few hiccups along the way, the big day finally arrived. That's a 53-foot truck pulling up to Goodrich Aviation in Binghamton. Inside, two fuselages and a mountain of crates that contain the parts that, one day, will become two airplanes. Some of those parts happen to have our names on them. Doug's crew didn't waste a moment. These guys moved like a pit crew at Daytona. Everything unloaded, labeled, and sorted with the precision of a NASCAR tire change and the enthusiasm of kids on Christmas morning. And there she is, our fuselage. Fresh off the truck, set gently onto the hangar floor for the very first time. Months of waiting, and now here she sits. A few days later, it was our turn to make the trip to Binghamton. I decided to fly our Cherokee up from Long Island, partly because it needed its annual inspection, and partly because, well, if you own a perfectly good airplane, you use it. It's a short hop over the Catskills, clear skies and light winds, one of those perfect flying days where the horizon feels endless. Touched down in Binghamton, right on schedule. Meanwhile, Nanette made the drive up in our Jeep, and let's just say, we timed it almost perfectly. She rolled in just a few minutes after I landed the plane. The last time Nanette had been there was in October of 2024. And then we turned the corner. There it was, our fuselage, sitting on the hangar floor for the very first time. We stopped in front of the fuselage and smiled. That kind of quiet, steady smile you only get when something clicks inside you. And honestly, I think I needed that moment just as much as she did. After months of waiting, shipping delays, and wondering if this day would ever come, here it was. Next up was the crate we'd both been excited and a little nervous about, the interior. Seats, carpets, side panels, the custom little details that make the inside of this airplane ours. We'd picked out the colors months ago on a computer screen, and if you've ever ordered something online, you know that leap of faith. But once we peeled back the wrapping, relief kicked in. The colors worked. Nanette and I were very happy with the result. The guys then brought us over to the big one, the engine crate, the beating heart of this airplane. Inside sat the 160 horse Rotax, wrapped up like a gift. And one day, this thing's gonna roar to life and pull us off the runway. But for now, it waits in its crate until later this fall, when we'll mount it on the fuselage. We took a walk over to check out another high wing that's about two months ahead of ours on the build process. And let me tell you, the interior is surprisingly spacious. You really get a good sense of what this airplane is going to feel like when it all comes together. And the doors to get in and out are as big as a Chrysler land yacht from the 1970s, which makes getting in and out of the airplane quite civilized. And finally, the propeller, a four-bladed Duke. We went with this setup for a reason, better performance on takeoff and climb, especially when we're using shorter runways. Holding it in our hands, you could feel the engineering behind it. It's not just a prop, it's the handshake between the engine and the sky. And that's where we wrap it up for the day. Another step closer to getting November Tango in the air. Until next time, happy flying.